Hello and welcome to the Hibiscus Swimsuit Sew Along. I'm so glad you've joined me. Um, today we are getting started. You're either going to make the choice of doing a view A or view B. And um, view A, let me, I'll just show you the pattern pieces. So the main difference in view A and view B is that this is, see, this is view A or view B and this is view A. View A is one solid front. So there is no separate bottom attachment on the front piece. While in view B, um, you have your bottoms completely separate. So you're going to have a seam line in the middle. So you can um, color black that if you want. It also allows you to have a waist ruffle all the way around on view B. While on view A, the ruffle that you would do would be on your sides like this as opposed to around like this. Um, on both options, there's the option for flounces, either a flounce across your neckline or a flounce across your leg openings. Um, so on either option, you can do those. I'll demonstrate them on the video for view B, but the same would apply for view A. Um, and on the view A video, I will be demonstrating how to do the ruffle and the same thing would apply to view B with the exception that it's going around the waistline as opposed to there. Okay. I also, I fully line my suits. I like to do that, but you can definitely sew them without lining. Um, if you do them without lining, you will at least want to line the crotch lining. Um, so to, for today's video, this is view A. Um, we will be sewing the bodice as well as attaching the, the bottoms to it. It's going to be one of the longer videos. Um, so today is the most intensive day of videos. If you're sewing view B, that'll be the next video after this one. Tomorrow we'll be doing the straps and then the final day, um, we will be just finishing our leg openings and then we'll have a day for catch up just in case you got behind on any of the steps. Um, but anyways, I'm excited to get started. Let's start cutting out our fabric. Okay, so the first step is that we are going to grab our lining. Um, if you're not using lining, then you're just going to put your back bodice and front bodice right sides together and then sew your seam, your side seam right there. Um, but I'm going to show you how I do it with lining. I always prefer lining in my suits. It just gives an extra layer of um, modesty. So you're going to put the right side of your front bodice up and then the back side of your, or I'm sorry, and then the right side of your back bodice down. So these are now right sides together. Um, and you're lining it up right here at this seam. Now you're going to grab your main pieces and you're going to put your back bodice right sides up. So right now, um, these, the wrong side of your back bodice is facing itself. Now you're going to put your front bodice on top of your back bodice right sides together like this. So your order is going to be lining of the front bodice facing up, lining of the back bodice facing down, light, um, main back bodice facing up, and then main front bodice facing down. And we're going to sew these at this seam right here with a 3 8 inch seam allowance using a stretch stitch. Um, now this is going to be the same step whether you're doing view A or view B. The only difference is, is that your um, front bodice isn't going to be as long. It's going to be cut off where your shorts would be. Um, but on view A, then you have the longer front one piece type bodice. So, but this step is the same for both. Okay, so now that we have sewn these two seams right here on the sides, we're going to just flip this one where now everything is lined up. So you should have your both lining pieces on the inside and you will have your main pieces on the outside. And now we're going to baste them together so that we can treat these, the lining and the main as one piece. This makes it so much easier. This is a step that you don't wanna skip because if you skip it, then you are trying to apply elastic onto a even more slipperier surface than it has to be. So all I'm going to do is just start on one side. I'll probably sew on the lining side and baste all of baste these layers together. So I'll baste this right here in one fell swoop all together and then I'll do the bottom all together. Here and here. And on this when I say baste, I mean to put your sewing machine at the longest inch length possible and just sew like a straight stitch because and you're going to end up 
um, ripping these out later. These are just a whole kind of like pinning the layers together for you. They're holding them together. And I like to sew between three eighths of an inch and a half an inch away from the seam or, or away from the edge. And this just makes it easier for me to rip them out later um, and that they're not um, interfering with my seam line. Okay, so I'm going to go do that and then I'll be right back. Okay, so now that I've basted, I can treat this as just one layer, the same as if I had just sewn um, my mane to my mane on these seams. And now I'm going to work on my side ruffle. So this is a ruffle that you can do on view A only, and it's a ruffle that goes all along the side edge. So it's not the one for the leg, it's the one for the side. So you're gonna wanna get, I print out my cutting chart, and it's going to be the one under wide side ruffle or narrow side ruffle. And I chose to do the wide um, for style A. And so you're going to, I have one piece, one really long piece that's cut out and I am going to gather it. So I'm going to go on one of the long edges and I'm going to sew, it's pretty much a basting stitch just like I did here. I'm going to sew it my longest stitch length. And then after I finish sewing at that, I can use, pull my threads and it'll gather this to where it's much shorter. Um, so I'll set it at the, the highest my machine will go. You can sew one row of stitches or you can sew two, whichever one you're more comfortable with. Um, I usually just sew one, it's quicker. Um, but if you, sometimes people will do it for more even ruffles, they'll do um, two. I also like to mark my halfway point on this right here. And then I'll also mar mark my halfway point on where I'm sewing it to, just so that I can make sure that I'm gathering evenly. It'll just give me more of an idea that I'm um, putting, I'm not putting too much in one area. Um, so I'll mark both halfway points on that. Now that I have my elastic um, where I've done the basting stitch so that I can gather it, I'm gonna put it right sides together um, along my suit. So right now I have, this is the back of it. I'm gonna be putting it all along this side right here. So starting at the very bottom of the back all the way until here on the front right sides together and um so let's see which one's the right side this one this one is so you're just going to put it along here i'm going to pull the i usually pull the bobbin thread until i can get this to match the length of this to match what i am gathering it to and also, you don't want to do as many gathers along this curved edge right here because it's already going to bunch up pretty pretty well from that. So you want to concentrate more gathers on the areas that are straight than you do on the areas that are curved. So this is what it should look like right now. I have it all clipped together so that I can go and attach my um, ruffles. I'm going to get you closer. So you can see... Um, where I have my basting stitch and you want to just kind of make sure everything looks nice and even that you can see where all the folds are and that they're even. So this is what it looks like on one side right here. Um, it's just kind of squished together where the front and the back are because it's opened up right now on the sides. So you can see this is where the front, that's the back, and this is just that side curve. This is a crotch on the bottom and there isn't a crotch on the back yet because we'll attach the bottoms later on in it. So I'm gonna go and you wanna use a stretch stitch either on your sewing machine, I'll use the, my serger, and you wanna sew all along this edge with them right sides together, so on both of these. And I initially, the first time I made this suit, I was really confused as to where to start the ruffle, if it should, it should be flush, or three eighths inch away. And I have since learned after making more than one suits that you wanna start um, it right flush with the edge. And you just don't want there to be any gathers in the first three eighths inches because that's gonna be turned under and you really don't want it to be so bulky when there's elastic there and it's turned under. Okay, so I'm gonna go do that and then we'll be ready to put in some elastic on this seam. So now this is what you should have. I've sewn it together and now I'm going to, I'm going to look first, look at all your stitches to make sure that you caught every single of those. Sometimes, you know, when you fold it out, you'll see a fold that you, 
you didn't catch quite right and you might want to go over that area and now's the time to do that and then after you're very happy with your seam line then we're going to go and remove the basting stitches we're going to remove the basting stitches on your main fabric as well as the ones that you use to gather um, on your ruffle um, then we will cut after we've removed the basting stitches you'll get out your chart that shows um, how much of your elastic to cut and you'll want to cut your um, side elastic so it's um, style a side elastic and um, you'll want to cut that according to the chart so um, that has to be 3 8 inch elastic it'll hold the ruffle down a lot better and um, that's the only area of the suit that you really want to make sure you're using the 3 8 inch elastic so cut two of those one for each side and 3 8 inch according to the chart what it says for side elastic okay so i have my basting stitches removed and i'm ready to put in my elastic i have um the two strips cut out and now I'm going to um, attach it to the wrong side um, of this. So the ruffle is done right sides together, but I'm going to sew it onto this wrong side. And I'm going to do that on both. So you notice the elastic is shorter than um, the seam. So that means we're going to need to stretch it. We don't really want to stretch it along here or along here. We want our stretching to be right here. Um, so you're going to want to kind of clip it along evenly until you get to here, stretch, and then clip along right here. Okay, and do that on both, on both sides. Whenever we sew this down, we're gonna wanna use um, a zigzag stitch. So I'm not gonna use my serger on this part. I'm just gonna use a zigzag and then do the zigzag all along here on my regular machine. I have my elastic zigzagged in. I used um, my stitches like a 3.0 for the width and for the length. And now I'm going to fold the ruffle to where it goes like this. You're gonna fold it to where all that is on the inside, but we're only gonna do it on the back portion. So from the shoulder seam to the back. So you know the back because it doesn't have the crotch area. So this is the front and then the back just ends like this. So you're gonna take, so find your, your seam right here, or I shouldn't say your shoulder seam, it's more of like a side seam, sorry, I misspoke. Okay, so from your side seam to here, you're gonna fold it back, and we're going to top stitch this area. So I like to just use a zigzag to top stitch this, especially since you're just ending in the middle, it's easier to um, back stitch right there. Um, with that but you can also use your cover stitch just make sure you secure your seam where you begin and your in where you begin and you end so it's just the small section right here on both sides that we're sewing down we're top stitching it to where the where the elastic is on the inside so it'll look like this on the front so my elastic is black and I'm enclosing it so you're not gonna see the elastic once I have that top stitch down and I'm gonna use the same stitch I'll anywhere from a 2.5 to a 3 um, on both the width and the length is usually my favorite whenever I'm sewing swim and top stitching elastic. Okay, so after you top stitch that one area of the, the side waist, we're going to set that aside and you are going to grab the pieces that you've cut out for the bottom sides and then the bottom. So on the bottom sides, you'll have two mirror images of the lining, two mirror images of the main, and then one of that you've cut on the fold for the main on the back, um, of, and then one of the lining. So in order to sandwich our seams, we're gonna start with our lining, and I'm going to take, let's see, whichever one is softer, I'll put facing up. That'll be your right side. So right side facing up, and then the, the one, the part that's your side seam is this part. That is your side seam. So you'll want that to go on the outside like this, and then you'll wanna make them mirror images with the right side facing up. And then now, whatever I want to be the right side of my lining, I am going to face down. So now these are right sides together, the lining is, and, there, and you're gonna check that seam on the side because it should be exact. You'll know you'll have the wrong one if you get it mixed up and you have this one over here, you'll notice that it doesn't match this side seam right here. So put those right sides together. And then now, now I'm gonna take my main 
the bottoms back and I'm gonna put it the wrong side facing the wrong side of this. It's gonna be right side up. And then I'm gonna take my main side bottoms and put those right sides facing down. So we're gonna sew the side seam. The sandwich that you should have now will be the lining of this, the bottom sides, right side facing up, the lining of the back of the bottom, right side facing down. Then you'll have your um, main of the back bottoms right side facing up and then your main of the side bottom right side facing down. And we're gonna sew this side seam with a 3 8 inch seam allowance using a stretch stitch. I'm gonna do it on my serger, just so right here. Now I have sewn just this side seam right here and now I can turn it out like this and then turn the lining out and now that side seam is completely enclosed. You want to make sure that you've marked the very center of your bottom. I marked mine when I was cutting it out so if you didn't do that then just fold it in half and mark where that center point is and then you're going to want to do the same thing. So grab your main. Let me see and you're going to want to do the same thing on the back. So on the back part, you know which is the back because remember it doesn't have that front crotch like, like this. It doesn't have that part. We're looking for the center of that and we're going to put those right sides together. So line up those two centers like this. So you're going to notice it would be like that after you finish sewing it. So I'm going to line this up and I'm just going to do a quick basting stitch to hold this part together. So I'll just sew with a long stitch all right here to hold this down. So I have basted my front to my back. I went ahead when I was basting it and did all the way the entire seam right here to so that my lining and my main would just act as one. It'll just make it easier in this next step to apply the elastic. Okay, so now I'm going to face it this way. Um, you're gonna wanna go to your chart and you wanna cut out for style A waist elastic, cut one, the highest one is 19. And we're going to be applying this um, to the wrong side of this um, fabric. Um, to the I'm sorry, to the wrong side of this seam. So you notice it is, you wanna mark the where the center of this elastic is because you notice you're gonna have to stretch it a little bit. So you wanna mark where the center is and then place it along where the center back is so that you can keep those together. And then you'll know how much to stretch it. And then just pin it to the beginning and see it's just a small stretch, it's not like that. And then apply this with a zigzag or um, you can also do it with a serger. Just make sure you're using a stretch stitch and apply your elastic all along on this wrong side. So I have applied my elastic to the wrong side of these bottoms when they're like this. And now I can fold them under and I am going to go and then just fold this down. First, I'll remove my basting stitches. You don't have to remove basting stitches. I just, I always like to, um, cause they're not necessary. They're just there to hold your fabric together, almost to like glue it together while you sew that seam. So you're not having to worry about them shifting apart while you're putting an elastic. Okay, so I'm just gonna fold this down also from the wrong side cause it's easier to sew. And on this one, when I top stitch, I just use a zigzag. So I'll fold this under and then I'll just sew with my zigzag. I'll keep this top out of the way and fold it that way. And then you're just gonna top stitch all along this seam. Okay now, so I have this down and you can lay your suit out like this. And now you're going to take your front and put your front right sides together with your back. So it looks like this. See, this is the front inside out, this is the top, and this is the bottom. And you are going to pull the, the side of the bottom and line it up with your front like this. So get some clips. And we're gonna sew both the lining and the main. Now, of course, if you didn't line it, it would just be the main. And you're going to sew it to this right here. I'm going to do this on both sides. So the ruffle is going to be between the swimsuit and um, the bottom of the sides. Like this. I'll show you after I clip it. So it finishes, it connects the bottom to the front, the back to the front. 
um, on the sides right here and leaves this ruffle open. So I'm just going to sew along this and then after I get back and sew that we can then finish top stitching the rest of um, our ruffle to where it it lays the way it's supposed to. So just sew this either with a stretch stitch or you can just um, sew it with a zigzag on your sewing machine. So this is where we're at at this point. I, we just connected our sides right here and we did that on both sides. And now whenever we top stitch, we initially only top stitched the back all the way up into this side seam right here. Now we're just gonna finish that. So we're going to turn our elastic under all throughout this ruffle I'm going to start when I'm top stitching, I'm going to start on the bottom and then come up and top stitch down there and do that on both sides. And I'm doing it with just a zigzag on my sewing machine. I set it um, between two and a half and three on the length and on the width. And then once we have that all top stitched down all nicely, we'll be ready to work on our straps. So I'm starting at the bottom and you're pushing um, the seam allowance towards the middle of the suit so that the ruffle is pushed out and you wanna make sure that the ruffle is not underneath and you're just catching the seam allowance. I like to sew from the bottom so I can catch the edge of the seam allowance. First, you're going to be sewing over the section that you didn't stretch at all, where it's just one for one. So on that area, you're just keeping everything nice and flat. But when you get to the area um, closer to the curve where you've had to stretch it, you're going to have to pull the elastic some so that it is flat. Otherwise, you'll be sewing um, little ripples into your swim. So I'm just trying to keep all the suit out of the way so I'm not accidentally top stitching a ruffle where I shouldn't be. And now I'm at the part where I need to stretch. And I'm just stretching it to where it's flat. This is what your front should look like right now.